I am so excited because the Step the Out Step TV, Out shows, TV shows, shows are back live on T2I TV. And for those who don't know, Step Out is a series of interviews and motivational segments designed to bring the best out of you and your business. Therefore, we have the following TV programs. Our first TV program, which is our flagship program, dubbed Step Out Step with out Oscar, with Bimpong, Oscar Bimpong, Bimpong, is designed to interview consultants, experts, talented people, and those doing exceptionally well in their communities. The second one is Step is Out Step SME, out, SME, SME Focus. 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 This is where we interview business owners and showcase their products and services. The third one is Step is Out step Youth out Impact, Impact Zone. Zone. This is where we interview young people succeeding against all odds to serve as an inspiration to other young people. And the last one is Step Out Authors, Authors Corner. Corner. And this is where we interview authors to share what their book is about to the world. Join us every week. Like T2I TV on Facebook and subscribe to the YouTube channel. To advertise or for further information, do WhatsApp plus 44759-1152983 or plus 233-5558039-24 or email info at traintoinspire.com. T2I TV. We engage, educate, enlighten, and empower. empower. Welcome to another exciting edition of the Step Out with Oscar Bimpo. And as usual, tonight is another powerful opportunity for us to bring to you one of our powerful discussions every single Saturday. For those that don't know me, my name is Oscar Bimpo. I am your regular host on the Step Out shows. That is every Saturday every every tuesday and every thursday 8 p.m gmt now what's the step out with oscar bimpo all about step out with oscar bimpo is where we bring you expert consultant talented people people doing exceptionally well in their communities people that have got an exceptional stories to share the main objective is to inspire you for you to achieve your goals in life the main objective is to cause you to believe again the main objective is to cause you to understand that if Mr. A has been able to do it, then you can also do it. It's all about inspiration. It's all about empowerment. It's all about knowledge. And that is what the, the platform TTY TV UK is dedicated for people on the continent of Africa and in the diaspora. And tonight is no exception. It is going to be an amazing, amazing discussion because I don't want to talk too much about my guest. But before I bring on to my guest, go on to my guest, I really want to talk about the sponsors of this program. This program is sponsored by Train to Inspire Consultancy. That is your business training and consulting firm. Train to Inspire is one of the most powerful consultancy firms that you can work with from your business startup to development and to building strategy. They also work with schools in relation to personal development of students from second cycle, colleges and universities. It's an amazing, amazing consulting firm. For those that don't know, T2I comes from the word train to inspire. And your honorable servant, me and my team, I have the brain behind train to inspire. Then also ZP Ghana Limited, your remittance and mobile money company based in Ghana. ZP just launched their USSD code for mobile money, and that is star 270 hash. Just dial it on your phone and register for ZP Mobile Money. 
now if you want to contact any of our sponsors their contact details are scrolling on the screen also if you want to be part or if you want to really support what we are doing just take the number for tty tv uk and trying to inspire consultancy it's going to be we are there to really bring knowledge a platform solely designed for knowledge seeking for the people of 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 africa and those in a diaspora and for us to do that we need your support now before i go on to my guest for today i really want to encourage everyone that is watching us your token of support to this platform is for you to really share this conversation for somebody to have an opportunity to watch this also like our page on facebook tty tv uk and subscribe to our youtube channel we want to grow this platform because what we are doing we know the results that we are getting and we believe that for us to really make sure that a lot of people get the opportunity to see this platform for them to really be part of this wonderful wonderful discussion platform it also depends on what you do don't be stingy with your share button your comments and your likes now who do i have on the host seat i have known this man since 1993 meaning that the time i started knowing this man was in the 20th century we are now in the 21st century meaning that i have known this man for quite a long time and i know what he can do and what he cannot do but today we have picked one of his strength and that is what we do on this platform we don't just bring anybody onto this platform we bring people that are experts in their area of, of, of in, in an area of expertise for them to come and really share their knowledge with us i always tell people that instead of reading a book that is going to take you a week come here for an hour and what you are going to gain is probably more than what you read in a book and who is this man that i'm talking about he's an accountant he's a banking executive and he's the former general manager of international bank liberia he is in the person of mr prince edry Baini. please welcome to step out with oscar bimpo and you are live on t2y tv uk thank you very much oscar um i want to say good evening to mm. all your listeners around the world and also good afternoon to those in the u.s like myself mm. Mm -hmm. who are talking to you this afternoon wow. and i also want to wish all Ghanaians happy independence day today mm. being six months the, the, mm. uh, the uh, independence day of ghana and we want to wish all Ghanaians happy independence day we pray that as a country we'll continue to grow we have a long way mm. but with god being on our side we're going to make it so all of us need to come together and work hard Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and put our country first mm -hmm. before everything else wow. and i believe if you do that we're going to see ghana as a developed country maybe in the next 30 40 years to come mm -hmm. wow so wow. thank you so much for having me on your platform i'm mm -hmm. really excited to be here because i know for so many years all the wonderful work you're doing for people mm -hmm. um you take steps to impact people mm. you 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 giving something that is intrinsic that lives with them forever mm. this is not an entertainment show this is an mm. educative show yes and i'm very much excited to be here to share my knowledge mm. and also to learn from mm. your custom for your from your um uh listeners and for yourself as well mm. wow. so thank wow. you so much yeah wow wow thank you very much for also honoring our invitation for you to come on this platform to share your knowledge with us and as i said earlier well, please share this for somebody to have an opportunity to really watch this interview if if you don't share it then trust me somebody might be missing out of a vital information that might help them today or in the near future now our topic for discussion is how to make the most out of banking in africa but before i go on to your topic who is prince Biney in your own words prince Biney is uh, my profession is an accountant 
But of course, you know, just like many other accountants, we find ourselves in various industries. And so over the years, I've added, I've adopted banking as my second profession, but I'm actually a truly an accountant. Um, until recently, I used to be the general manager of International Bank Liberia Limited. I was actually the deputy chief executive in terms of running the bank and had an overall responsibility across all the various uh, functional areas. Mm. Um, as a banker, I have interest in certain specific, my, my strength is in capital management, in risk management, in Basel, and, and recently I've become so excited about financial technology. And so mm. I've focused more on process automation, development of systems to make banking easier for, for our clients. And so that it's not just that you giving your money to the bank, but mm. your experience of relating with the bank become enjoyable, friendly, and convenient for you. And so this is, this is my background. Um, I've worked with international bank like Liberians, as I indicated earlier on. But uh, before that, I used to be with Sahel Sahara Bank, mm. which today it's now called Omni Bisik Bank. Mm. And I was there for almost nine years as the financial controller. I also work with GT Bank. So oh. uh, I have, and through my work at Sahel Sahara Bank, I did a number of projects across the African continent. And so, um, we we touch on little bits of experiences around several countries in on on the continent. Yeah, wow, so that's wow, wow. that's my background. So so a, a lot of a lot of a lot of us sometimes where we really want to go, the direction we want to go in terms of career wise or in terms of our profession, sometimes is very difficult. I have seen that you find so much fulfillment in banking or as an accountant, right? Oh, when did it really dawn on you that, look, I want to do business at secondary school, go to uni to go and do business, stay in business as an accountant or as a banker? When did this all this journey start? And when did you really had that time that, look, banking is my field. This is where I want to really position myself for the rest of my life. Okay. Um, just like many of us, I had been growing up thinking that I wanted to be an engineer. I really like cars, modeling of little, little stuff. And so, however, when I went to secondary school, um, I had an uncle who is who was very successful in business. Actually, he used to, those of your um, listeners who are in the UK, he used to own Express Funds International. That was a money transfer company. Okay, Express and Funds. As a young boy, I saw how successful he was in doing business and he he was an accounting person actually so that actually motivated me to you know shift from <laughs> from engineering to accounting and so i went to st augustine's college mm. studied accounting uh, business there and then went to university of ghana and uh, studied uh, admin that's when i specialized in um, um, um accounting then after that i also um studied for acc so i'm a qualified accountant as well um, immediately after school, I started working with him. His company was a financial services company. It is not a bank, but we also provided financial services. And at that point, I really didn't know whether one day I was going to be in a bank. But I think mm -hmm. after working there for some time, I felt that I needed to explore more. I needed to um, experience what's happening outside that particular market because they were just involved in money transfer remittances and mm -hmm. to be honest with you oscar at the time i was working in uh, international uh, 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 um, express funds i had no idea about how the accounting system in the in the, in the company worked even though i was an accountant i graduated as an accountant i was doing more of systems development i was doing more of auditing so I used to analyze data using Excel and all that, but I was not really part of the accounting system in the company. And over time, I think I grew impatient and I wanted to see what is really accounting in, in a company on a day to day basis. And so I started looking out for a job and I was lucky I got a job at research school as an accountant. I mean, I had gone to the place. I have no idea what accounting is supposed to be. 
in terms of practical experience, you you have you have the theory, you've learned all that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. in practical mm -hmm. experience, but you know what I was lacking? The school had backlog of five years accounting that had not been prepared. Wow. So my task was to prepare those accounts. Oh, and wow. as I started working on them, I was working with PKF, PKF auditors. So they come in and teach me what to do, you know, where how you should structure everything. And so within a year, I was able to audit three year accounts. And that wow. built sufficient capital accounting experience. Such mm. a way that one day I was at work when one of my staff came to tell me that look, there's a new bank in, in Ghana. It's called GT Bank. They are recruiting. Are you not interested? I said, Oh, really? So that afternoon, I quickly went there, submitted my CV. I'm telling you, by the time I left the place, I got a call. That look, they wanted to see me. So I went the next day, met the MD and two top officials of the bank. And immediately after that interview, I got employed as the financial controller of the bank. I had no idea what bank accounting is supposed to be. But I got wow. in there. The good thing with GT Bank is that, you know, it, they came from Nigeria, so they have all the systems in place. Everything is laid out. And so when you get in there, you just read the manuals, what to do? And it was so easy. To this time, I was actually preparing financial statement for the for the for the bank, and that is how I got into it. And over the years, my passion for it has grew because you know what? I am not just looking at the pure accounting work, but how systems development, IT interface with accounting to create exciting experience for customers. So it's all blending together in that that area. And so this is what led me to where I am today. Over the years, in the last couple of years, I've not been doing more of accounting because, you know, in banking, as your career grows, you move away from your specialized area, you become more of a generalist. And so mm -hmm. in the last few years, I've been doing more of general banking, banking operations, uh, IT, everything, having a broader understanding of the various aspects of the banking system. So it's not just limiting yourself to finance. But of course, my finance background gives me an advantage because you begin to understand there are certain basic things that you're already familiar with because you are the one preparing the accounts and showing everybody what the bank has done. And so that is what brought me to where I am today. It's just privilege. Yeah. But can I ask you that you are a very fast learner, though you don't know, but you are so quick to learn. Now, what advice are you going to give to people that are always waiting for opportunities that are within their strength before they make a move? It's all about humility. You know, mm. you have to be willing to venture into unknown. Mm. The, 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 you need to be bold to get in there. And the truth is that when you get in there, you humble yourself and you will learn. By the time I was going, when I when I joined International Bank Liberia as the general manager of the bank, I had not done banking operations. Mm. I had not done banking operations. I was only a finance. So when, when I was going there, I, I knew that, look, I was going to be responsible for many other functions that I had not done before. But you know what? I went there, listened to them. You let the people know that, look, what this is how things are done. And then based on your experience, you can add value to what you're doing. So it's it's an issue of sharing. You understand? It's not you always giving, but you give and you receive. For me, my style in management has always been to empower my staff. When I was in, in Ghana, in my finance department, I used to tell them that, look, hey, I need each one of you to build capacity in a particular aspect in accounting, whether it's IFRS standards, whether it's taxation or whatever it is. Build capacity there so that when we are at meetings, you are the one to teach me the boss that look, when it comes to this, you are the expert. Mm. And this is how, and thank God today, when I look back, some of the guys I trained, they're doing very well in the bank. You know, some of them are handling very critical functions of the Omni BC Bank today. And it's because of that particular style I have. You're, you're the boss, but you don't know everything. You understand? And you give. Wow. When you do that, you empower them. And as a result of that, you also get to learn much more. So it is more of mm. give and take. And that is my style. And mm. I think it's been mm. very helpful for me throughout the years. Everywhere that I've been, 
by by the grace of God, I'm able to make some impact in the in the bank, not just in terms of the bank's its own development, but even in the in the staff that I work with. So, so what you are trying to tell people is that when you are given opportunity and you don't even know what to do, or you are not really an expert in that field, you still have to take out the opportunity, go out there and learn. Is that what you are telling people? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Because, because competency, it's not about how much academic knowledge you have. That is not it. Human capability, your, your, the way you handle issues, the way you're able to deliver results, it's not only about your knowledge. It's a mixture of your knowledge, your ability to work with people, ability to listen, coordinate, and also you should be somebody who can think, think on the spot, right? You have to come up with solutions and, 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 and advice on the spot. So once you can bring all of this together, it's going to make you successful. I'm not advising you that, look, if you are, let's say, an engineer, go and apply for a job as a medical doctor. No, that's not what I'm saying. In a, in a, in a banking field, when you get into a bank, there are different functional areas. There are different specialization. For me, even though I call myself as an accountant, as a financial person in a bank, my, my area in a bank, some, some people are in the bank, they're very good in, let's say, IFRA, they're very good in reporting. Somebody is good in transaction processing. They're all different types of accounting. So we all have even different sub-specialties. So I'm not saying that it's a complete, like, apply for a job that you have no qualifications about. When I was going to Liberia, because they knew the kind of work I've done in the finance, in the, in the form of system development across the, the, my former bank that I work with, that's how come I went in there. So you, you should have something, at least a basic understanding to build on. But my point is that don't get scared because it's an, be willing to go into an area that you haven't been before. That's what I'm saying. Be, wow. be willing to explore because by doing that, you increase your sphere, you increase your influence, you increase the, the capacity that you can deliver in, in terms of when it comes to results. Yeah. Because what you are saying, to really add to what you are saying, I, I think I use the same technique as a lecturer, right? And I have got to the stage where I don't go there and talk. I go there and bring the best out of my students by consistently engaging them to, through questions, through activities. And to be honest, before I realized, the kind of things I learned from my students. So after finishing this class, the next class, sometimes the examples that I even prepared, I don't use it anymore because the first class, the examples that they gave me is sometimes even far better than the examples exactly. that I prepared myself. And this yeah. is what you are saying, that the, the, to build capacity is about really engaging with people and letting people be the best in the areas that they are in and collectively so you don't go there as the boss knowing everything isn't no, it no and 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 if you do that you get a lot of you know, let me give you an example when i went to liberia you know um banking system in liberia and ghana vary a little bit you know in the west african region we have different stages of development when it comes to banking and so when i got into the bank there were certain things that was I mean, there were certain ways that they used to, because I was privileged to work in a bank that was in a group operating in multi countries, right? And so you get there, when you work in an environment like that, you, you, you get to understand what is going on in different countries from Tunisia, Morocco, whatever it is. And you, I get to Liberia and then I see that they do certain things and like, oh, why do you, why do, you do this this way? You know, but the normal person will say, oh no, stop it. And then, you know what I did? I'll ask them. Why do you do this? What's the reason? And as they keep explaining to you, you begin to understand that, look, the banking practices over there has been tailored to suit the cultural and environmental circumstances. So it is not what you know in Ghana that you go there and say, hey, look, this is how it is done. No. So you share. And as I did that over time, then I tell them, okay, look, so this is the way you do it. So how about looking at it this way? Why don't we... Let's say put this in place and see what the result will be. And when you do that, you get a lot of buying in from them. You know, they become more confident. And I can tell you through that, 
I was able to make a lot of changes in the bank, you know, because I didn't go there as know it all. I went there to learn what they have, then add what I know. And so we come out with processing solutions that stands the test of time. It's, it's, it's made to suit the environment, but it's also, it's also made to be up to date when it comes to banking. I, the, that bank is the oldest bank in, in Liberia. I mean, it was established in 1947, 10 years even before Ghana became independent. And wow. they have certain things that had been brought over the years, you understand? So you cannot just go there and say, hey, look, because you're the ball, changes and all. No, I did that and I can tell you, I am, when I look back, I feel very proud of how I was able to work with the people and make changes that that are required to see the bank doing very well. The bank has been doing well before I even got there. But I can tell you when I left, it's even much more better. Mm. And that is wow. that is wow. the, the and I'm telling you, it's not because I know everything. It's because you go there with the, with the humility that look, let's learn, let's see mm. what can be done to make things better in in, 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 in in the circumstances that you find ourselves. You can you cannot practice. Everything that you do, for example, you cannot go there and tell them things that have been done in the US here. Mm. It's, yeah. it's not going to be suitable for a bank in Ghana. Right. Because in the US, almost everybody has a car. So you go to the bank, they have drive through banking, right? You don't actually get down to get enter the banking hall. You cannot mm -hmm. put that in Ghana because how many people have cars in Ghana? Mm. You know? So you have to, whatever you're doing has to be, it has to fit the cultural circumstantial environment that you're operating in yeah. do you know what we we have diverted for 30 minutes right because the, 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 this line of questioning i'm really enjoying it i wanted to do a follow-up question i said no let's let's stick to our topic now yeah. I, th I think i think one day you, you you have to come and talk about leadership and that is leadership in the corporate sector and and yeah. and, and i think that is going to be another powerful discussion it should be, it should now, be a great let, let, for me exactly exactly now let's go let's go uh, let's go on and and I, I want you to tell me the, the 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 background of the banking landscape in africa you can use ghana as a case study okay so um i'll just we all know what banks are in an economy bank is like the heart in the body the heart pumps receives blood and pumps it out to the various organs to keep the body alive that's exactly what the bank does in an economy. It is the nerve center of the economy. In in the your in a economic 101, basic economic 101 class, they will tell you that it is bank serve as a financial intermediary. It takes money from people who are who do not have it and give it to those. It takes money from people who have excess and give it to those who need it. And that particular rule is so important in every economy, such that if you take that function out. You, as a, as Oscar, if you have an excess money, you want to make interest on it, you have to now go out there on the street and look for, talk to people individually and find out who is interested in borrowing from you. And then you give the money to the person. The other problem is that when you give the money to the person, the person may not pay. You, you alone would now have to go and look for the person and get the person to pay. Banks serve as the middle person in the, in, in that particular function because we specialize in our capacity to understand people's needs in terms of borrowing. And then also we are able to ensure that the risk of somebody not paying, the bank is bigger, it can go out there, it has the resources to chase the person. So this is how banks perform. In terms of the landscape, and I'll give an example, on the African continent, I, will, I have grouped them into um, different sectors according to the stage of development. The top banks, the bigger banks on the continent are basically based in the North African countries and South Africa. Actually, the top three biggest banks in Africa are all from South Africa. The next 10, you find them in Morocco, you find them in Egypt, you find them in Algeria. Then West Africa zone, you, you find the Nigerian banks playing a bigger role in them. In West Africa, we have two different kinds of banking structures in West Africa. We have the, the Francophone humans or the French people who they, they, they actually have a CIFA, CIFA currency. Their central bank is based in Senegal. So they have a mall of 
harmonized banking system, all those countries around, unlike the Francophones that have different structures. In Ghana, we've seen a lot of problems in the banking industry in the last few years. I would say that some of those are important because banks serve as a fiduciary institution. People have to have trust in a bank. And so you have the leadership of banks. If they, they are there and they are not taking good care of people's money, of course, you need something to be able to address that issue. And that's the role of the central bank in this. The central bank is fully empowered to do this. And so we've seen major changes in the banking sector. For me, my only regret is that I wish that they had done it in a way to be able to retain some substantial amount of local participation. Because GT Bank last year made a profit of almost 70 million Ghana CD. I'm talking about 70 million Ghana CD, right? Wow. Most of that money is going to go to Nigeria. So they are making money here. Why don't we also create the landscape such a way that the local bank owners would also be able to participate? And so for me, I felt that the way it was done, most of them were, but I'm not, I don't want to go into the politics of it. And I'm just talking purely as a banking professional that those, some of the steps were important. And so I can tell you today, the banking industry in Ghana is very strong. It's re resilient. The only regret is that we have very, we have reduced participation of local interest. You know, and, um, I believe that as we continue to learn, there will be, um, improvements. There will be, there will be a way that we can have Ghanaians coming back to, you know, get, some because it's it's a business that we should also benefit, but unfortunately, night everything is gone out there. This kind of sentiment I'm expressing, I'm I'm it's it's a, a cut across. If you go to all the various countries on the, especially in West Africa, there's the same kind of sentiment being expressed over there. Yeah, and so in terms of the the banking landscape, this is this is what I can say now because we don't have much time. I don't want to get into very yeah. details of what each yeah. specific ones represent and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So let yeah. if you have more time, I can do that later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so for a typical bank, what are what are some of the uh, uh, kind of services and products that are available? Okay. Um. So I'm going to give you the generic types of services. Um. There are two kinds of three. I'll say three kinds of products that the bank will offer. The account, which means you can put when you go and deposit money in the bank. You have your deposit, or you can take a loan, or they can provide some services for you. Bank, apart from the fact that they receive money and 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 give our loans, we also provide other services. Like sometimes we provide advisory service to people. We can give you advice on how to where to invest your money. Um, we give you solutions to make payments easier for you. That's why all the banks are issuing Visa cards and all that. In terms of the deposit, we. They are basic, so we talk about your current account savings. And each one, one thing I always advise people is that savings account, current account, all those various accounts are designed for certain specific circumstances. So if you go to a bank to open an account, you need to explain what you need the account to do for you. And then the bank will advise you on which is the best account to open. I can see a lot of people going to the bank to go and open current account. You're not going to issue checks. If you're an individual, one individual, an employee of somebody, you're not good. Today, we have ATMs, we have cards, and so you can easily access your money without issuing checks. And because when you operate a current account, there are charges on them. Service account will give you some little interest. So you need to know all these differences before you get into it. Um, I would, if I want to go into details in terms of what kinds of products a business should have and what kind of product an individual should have, probably I can explain some of them. For example, um, if, I, if you're a corporate, a business account, you are not going to open a savings account. You need a current account. How many accounts do you want to open? It's another issue. Some people will just get up, open an account in every bank. It's not a good advice. Because what happens is that I don't if you want a loan from a bank, the bank wants to see your turnover, how much money has been coming in and out of your account. And based on that, they can decide to give you a loan. If you spread yourself too thin, they may not be able to. Of course, sometimes they will ask you to bring your statement from all the various accounts. But 
banks will be more comfortable if you're dealing with them as compared to if you're dealing with other banks. And so the capacity, the, their assessment of willingness to work with you may be reduced just because you're spread out completely across several banks. Yeah. Wow. Now, I, I want to really, um, um, really base on loans and interest, right? Okay. Now, mm -hmm. I also believe that anybody that puts their money um, um, at the bank, they really want a return on their money. Now, this is where in Africa, especially in Ghana, whether through inflation or whatever it is, interest rate on your loans is too high. Now, if I put my money in savings, I want to attract a little bit of interest on it. But interest on savings is nothing to write about. Now, these two, for example, that is where every ordinary person knows. If they go into the bank, they want to have an opportunity to have loan or they want to have an interest on the money that they have put there. But these two, there is nothing to write about when it comes to banking in Africa, especially in Ghana. What is your take on that? Okay. Um, the, the main reason for this is because of how the structure of our economy is. Um, in, in Europe and in America and other, you see people coming to deposit money for 10 years. Banks don't get that kind of deposit. Most people will come, they will come and deposit money, maybe one year maximum, 91 day fixed deposit and other. You see, for a bank, because there's so many risk factors in giving our loans in Africa, we don't have a very strong credit reference. So people coming in to borrow from you, you don't, you're able to do some credit appraisal, but it's not as finite as you would have done in the U.S. where you have complete history of how the person has borrowed all over. And so uh, there's some, a, a lot of these risks are then built into the loan. And that's the reason why the loan amount is expensive. The loan interest is normally expensive because, and also there's something in an economy we call rates free rates, which is the treasury bill rate. You know, the treasury bill rate is the rate where if I go and buy treasury bill, I know that definitely the government will pay. There's no way the government will default. And so if a bank is going to give you a loan, the, 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 the reference rate is the treasury bill rate. You understand? So you, if I'm giving, if I'm going, if I have money and I want to go and buy treasury bill and I know 100% the government is going to pay me, why should I give it to an individual who may default and charge the person less? So the, the, the treasury bill rate becomes the reference upon which everything else is built on top. Mm. If the government keeps the treasury bill, treasury bill rate low, it will also affect interest on loans. But because the treasury bill rate is high, banks will have to, you don't have much option in that particular instance. The reason why savings account, <laughs> the interest is low on savings accounts is because you see, typically savings account is not actually for savings. This is one thing I want people to understand. There's a difference between if you are if you want to save money, you have to go to the bank and buy a treasury bill or buy a fixed deposit. You keep the money for 90 days, 180, then you can get a good interest on it because those funds are normally priced at treasury um, treasury bill rate plus something on top of it. But savings account is just an account where instead of keeping your money under your pillow, you put it in an account. <laughs> <laughs> which you don't have to be assessing every day. Mm. That's the difference. So if you want to save, it's not savings account that you should use. Savings account, the only difference between savings account and a current account is that savings account gives you some interest because the whole idea, the bank, we do not expect you to come for the money frequently. You leave it there. The, you see, your ability to earn interest depends on how long you commit to leave your money with the bank. So that the bank can now say that, okay, because your money is going to be with me for three months, I know you're not coming for it. I cannot give it out as a loan to somebody. Because if, if I, if you give me the money, you bring me 10,000 Ghana CD, I give it out as a loan to someone. Then the, the next money you are in front of the bank say you want your money back. I can't go back to the person and say, pay me before I can pay you. So it's a cost for the bank. And that's the reason why savings interest rate is low. So I would advise that if you want to open a savings account, don't think that you're going to use it for savings. If you really want to save, you have to buy a fixed deposit. Buy something that is, is going to give you interest. Savings account is just keeping your money somewhere, like you're keeping it under your pillow. So that as and when you need, it's not something you need every day, but maybe two, two weeks, three weeks time, you need something, then you go for it. 
So it's not to the purpose is not to earn interest. Yeah. The, I, I've I've really learned something today, especially with this savings thing. I never knew this to be honest. <laughs> yeah. It's not for, it's yeah. not for investment. Wow, okay. wow, wow, wow. Because because a lot of us, we think that when we save our money at the bank, there have to be interest on it, isn't it? But now yeah. you are telling us otherwise. And, and and I think it's something that I think is quite interesting when when we get to get some of this knowledge. And and trust me. But you, you, were, you were making a mention of the treasury bill rate that is mm -hmm. corresponding to... The, the let's say the interest rate that is going to be put on the loans. So yes. does it mean that if the treasury bill rate, for example, is twenty two percent, then it automatically equals the interest rate on your loan to be twenty two percent, right? Is that what no, you mean? Means, it means that your your loan interest will be more than twenty two percent. Okay. Because the bank, wow. the treasury break, treasury bill rate is the base. Then the bank will put in other costs. For example, if you take the loan and you don't pay, the bank will have to pick a car, come to your house, chase you. They're going to use fuel. Yeah. So there's operational costs in there. And so they will put maybe 2 3% margin on top of that. If the treasury bill rate drops, so for example, if the margin between the loan, your loan interest rate, and the treasury rate is 5%, when treasury bill rate is 22%, your loan will be 27%. When the treasury bill rate drops to 10%, your loan will be 17%. So the, okay. the interest of loan will change according to how the treasury bill rate um, uh, function. And you know, the treasury bill rate is purely, either I would say responsibility or irresponsibility of government. Mm. <laughs> you know, because- So, so um, what, what causes the fluctuation of the treasury bill rate? Because I think that it, is critical for how much interest that you are going to pay, isn't it? Yes, because the government decides to compete with you who want to loan from banks. That's what it is. The government also want to borrow from banks, but when, when they are borrowing from banks, they have their own fixed rate because you see, um, go, go, there's something we call sovereign bond or sovereign guarantee. Treasury rate has a sovereign. A country can never collapse. <laughs> you know, a business can collapse, but a country, theoretically, no country can collapse. So countries have zero default. This is in theory, but. In, in these days, there are even different ratings for different countries. You understand? But Zim, Zim, the absolute Zimbabwe. is that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the absolute is that interest rates, countries, a country cannot default. So, treasury rate has zero default rate, right? And so, that is the reason why, if if the government decides to borrow more, if the government wants more money, they want a lot of people to come and deposit with them. They will increase the treasury rate so that people will come and give them more money. And as people are giving the government more money, banks are losing money. So banks don't have enough money to go and buy, uh, go and give it to you as a loan. So there's a competition between individuals or businesses and the government. Mm -hmm. So that is what affects the changes. A lot of times they need more money to pay salary. They need more money to do other things. So they will, they will go ahead and do it. If, if the, if the economy is managed well, of course, government will always borrow. But if the borrowing is minimized, it, it means that there will be more money out there. You know what? There, were, there used to be days where banks go out chasing customers to, to come and borrow because that was the time when the treasury bill rate was so low. And so they want banks want people to come in because they have excess money. So that, that is the, that's the relationship. It's more of an economic equilibrium balancing of sources of funds and available of funds, availability of funds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, how can one make uh, the best out of their bank as an individual? Okay. I will tell you the first and the most important thing is if you have an account to your bank, monitor your account. Olden days, we used to have statements sent to you every month. The bank would print your statement and send to you. These days, we don't do that because we have a lot of electronic systems that is going to, you get your statement by email or sometimes you can log on on the internet banking. And this is the time when people should rather monitor their accounts much more than before. Because in the olden days, they used to post transactions manually. You know, a human being will look at it, verify and post. These days, it's all automated. It's a computer that is doing that for you. And so, and once the computer is doing that, there could be mistakes. So you need to check and verify, always pick your account, make sure every transaction on the account, you are well. 
One thing is that if you see a mistake on your account, you can always go back to the bank and ask the bank to change it. But if it takes you three years to go back and say, oh, look, you debited me wrongly for $5 or five CDs. Three years ago, that bank would have, whatever that charges the bank made, they would have declared it as profits. They've paid dividends to, to shareholders out of the money. So when you go back after three years to tell them that you made a mistake, they'll be reluctant to do anything about it. But if you see it on time, you go there, they will correct it quickly, and then you will um, you will have the issue resolved. So the first thing is monitor your account. The second thing is that know what you need, what you know your needs, and go to your bank and discuss this with them. Right? There are several products in the bank, but not all of them are suitable for you. So you have to know. And all these products have been designed to suit individuals in certain specific circumstances. So you need to go to the bank and get that, that knowledge from the bank. Um, these days we have internet banking. We have a lot of people take advantage of it. Internet banking is convenient for you. You don't have to go to the bank to go and queue when there are certain things you can do online. So you need to take interest in these things and get them. Um, I know people are skeptical of internet banking because they think people can steal their money and all that. So if you are, I can tell you that for most banks, the internet banking platforms are well secured. But if you are not comfortable, go for something they call OTP, um, one-time password. If you log into your internet banking, the computer will send you a password onto your phone, and then you can check. In that case, if even somebody steals your password on your on your internet banking, they cannot access it because before they can go in there, they need to communicate with your phone. For the person to be able to steal your money, the first thing you need to have your phone and your password. It's more complicated, right? So I want to encourage people to take part in this, to, to use them. The banks have developed all this for our customers. A lot of times people are skeptical. They don't want to use it because they feel, you know, they can be manipulated or somebody can hack into it. it it's not likely that it's not an easy thing to do. I'm not saying it's never happened before, but it's not an easy. Banks spent millions of dollars to enhance the security of their internet banking in such a way that you can't easily um, um, hack into it and manipulate people's account. Um, wow. If, if you want to go and borrow money from a bank, please, first thing, be prepared that you're going to pay. Mm. <laughs> I have experienced this a lot. So I want to tell you, if you're not ready to borrow, if you're don't, if you not in a situation where you can pay a loan, don't go for it. In Ghana, credit reference is not that strong. In most other African countries, it's not that strong. But one time, if you do that, what happens is that it affects your ability to get loans from other places. Mm. And so, and all of us, when banks start collapsing, we criticize the government and other, but most of us are also part of the people who take money from banks, they don't pay. Their intention from day one is that, look, they're not going to pay. So that's something that I would encourage everybody to desist from. It, it doesn't help you. It's not going to help the bank. It doesn't help the economy. Yeah. So um, for individuals, these are the little advice I can give you Make sure you are close to your account. Monitor what happens. It's something that a lot of people ignore. We don't take it serious. Yeah. Mm. Well, if you are watching us, we want to encourage you to share this for somebody to have an opportunity to really watch this program. Um, we are bringing this to the last quarter of the program. So please share this and also like our page. That is T2I TV UK on Facebook and also on YouTube. Now, I want to ask the same question, but that is to businesses. How mm. can they make the most out of banking as a business? Okay. Um, most, most times, the banks have separate products for individuals and for businesses. And so, um, as a business person, the first thing I want to say, the same as I said with the individuals, monitor your account. Go through your accounts and check. The same thing applies. Now, the second thing is that know the kind of product. Um, if you are a business person that operates an account where you have excess money, there's something in banks they call call account. Open one where any excess money that you don't need, the system, the, the banking system automatically will sweep the money into an account where you get some interest. A lot of people don't know about this. They leave the money in the account. For course, for banks, we will advise you what to do. But some customers will not do that. And you're able to get some interest from that. Um, for, for loans, businesses that need loans, this is one thing I want to focus a little bit on. 
you will find people coming in with manipulated financial statement. They cook their financial statement and then present it to the bank. Most of the time, banks we're able to know that look, hey, this statement is cool or it's not genuine. One thing is that the kind of loan the bank is going to give you is based on all the, the information you submit. So if you submit something that is not accurate, they may give you a loan. Maybe your business, you need a loan for one year. But based on the information you submit, the bank will give you a loan for six months, which is going to affect you. And there's one thing I want to also say that I've heard a lot of people complain about, you know, I want to start a business, but I go to the bank, they don't want to help me. I want to tell you, bank loan, it's not to start a business. Mm. Bank loan is not to finance, it's not to finance your capital. Because there are two different things. You can, bank loan has to be paid. <laughs> There is no excuse the way the system has been structured because you know what? If 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 you don't take the if if you don't pay the loan, the central bank asks the bank to pay for you. <laughs> so the banks are the banks have to pay that loan. It's not it can never be unpaid because the person who deposited the money will still come back for the person his money. And so banks loan bank loans are not to be unpaid. And so when you are starting a new business, you haven't tried, you don't know. Um, the business is not trial and tested. You cannot use a bank loan to finance. Because what happens is that if something goes wrong, the bank will be on your on your heels, and then they will force you to pay the money. Meanwhile, as you're growing your business, you needed that capital in your business to run. So I advise people that look, we have other kinds of funds like venture capital and all that. Try and look for those ones. Once you have that established, then you can pick a bank loan to support your operations as you run. But your capital should not be based on bank loan. Because that's going to kill your business in a year or two, just because you're not able to. Because when you're starting a business, there will be a lot of uncertainties. You need to run the business over time so that you're you're able to ascertain the 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 seasonal factors in your business. You're able to predict how things will happen. If you are starting from day one, you don't have that information, and so bank loan will not be suitable. So it is not a fault of banks that if you want to start a business, you go to them and they say we can't help you because banks bank loans are not structured for that purpose. I will also, there are many other factors, other services the bank provide for businesses. We have letters of credit, we have um, acceptances. There are some transactions, we call them off balance sheets. Off balance sheet means that they're not actually giving you money, but they're going to give you a paper that look. So it's, let's say you want to buy goods from somebody from China and um, you have an option of sending your money to the person in China, then the person will send the goods. The problem is that you you may you may not even know who is supplying you that goods. The person may not be genuine. There could be all, all sorts of fraud involved. It's good to use a bank to establish an LC. So because mm -hmm. banks we have a network, a bank in Ghana will have a will have a partner in China. So they will communicate, and then the partner in China will now deal with the customer who is going to send the money, and that helps mm -hmm. to secure you. Instead of you actually physically sending, a lot of Ghana Ghanaian businesses people do that. They will just pick money and send it straight to China or to other places to buy goods. LCs may not be good for everybody. So I'm not saying that every business person should use, use it, but at least explore that. If that is not available, then you may decide to send money. But it's good to use all these other services the bank have to protect you as an individual involved in trading. Wow, wow, wow. And That's when quite... it comes to loans, when it comes to loans, let me just add one last thing. People, a lot of people like overdraft, right? Different kinds of loans are suitable for different circumstances. If you're running a business that you are not expecting a line sum payment coming into your account at a particular point in time, avoid things like overdraft because you're going to default. And if you take a loan and you don't pay, there are costs also involved. If you default, there's something they call default penalty. So if let's say the interest on the loan is 12%, if you default, they make the interest like 30% <laughs> to become more expensive for you. And so you have to plan your, your business such a way that you are, you know that look, your installment is coming due. You prepare ahead and make payments of it so that you are not, you avoid all those extra costs that come, come as a result of you not being able to meet your, 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 your installment payment. Now, let me ask you this about loans and collateral. Because this is okay. very, very significant in Africa, especially in yeah. Ghana. Now, why why is it that banks always are looking for collateral for loans that um, people come for? What, 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 what's the relationship? 
Okay, so that is what I explained earlier on. That you see, because bank bank money, the bank is taking money from somebody, a depositor, somebody who has put money in the account. And then they're giving it to you. If the person come to demand repayment, the bank can never give that person any excuse. You you whenever you deposit your money in the bank, you just go and they make it available for you. And so the same way, if you're giving a loan to somebody, I mean, we have to make sure we protect our interests such a way that if you're not able to pay, at least we have something to fall onto. It's not the best thing, right? But this is how we are structured. Because unlike venture capital, there are some institutions that are called venture capital that will partake with you in your business. And then if the business does well, you share the profit. If the business does not do well, you all share the losses. Banks cannot do that by virtue of the fact that the money we use is not our money. You understand? It is for customers. And so we, this, and a lot of times I also have to let people know that most of these are also prescribed by the central bank. If most of the time when the central bank come to look into your books and they find that you are giving a loan without a collateral, they will make a provision. You know, provision means that they're going to take money out of your, your own profit and give it against the loan. You understand? So whenever you're doing that means you are losing out. And the reason is that central bank want to protect people who deposit money so that at any point in time, when these depositors come for their money, they're going to get it. There, there's no excuse not to pay a loan. Wow. This wow, is how banks wow. are structured. Wow, wow, wow. I think I've got one question from Koku Sinti Mensa, and he says, what is his advice for those who have huge sums of money but don't know what to do with it? to make some appreciable returns from it. Okay. Thank you very much, Sintim. We, I'm happy that you are, you are listening to us. Um, so it, it depends. If you have a huge sum of money, how long are you willing to put the money away? The interest you make on it depends on how long you are willing to invest that money. So from the perspective of banks, we have a lot of products. In some banks, we have something we call fixed deposit which you can go and negotiate. They can give you three months fixed deposit. These days, fixed deposit interest rate is a little bit closer to, to treasury bill rate. Or sometimes if the amount is huge, like he's saying, the bank will even give you fixed deposit treasury bill rate plus two, which means that instead of buying treasury bill, you're going to make plus 2% on top of that. There are some other product we call certificate of deposit. Certificate of deposit is also a fixed deposit. But the advantage of that is that you're going to have a certificate where you can negotiate, give it to somebody as payment. Beyond that point, the banks can also advise you to do investments with a lot of mutual funds. You can buy treasury bills. You can buy bonds. I want to explain that those investments, the money move out of the bank. It's not to the bank. The bank only serves as an agent. For example, if you want to buy treasury bill, the bank would help you if the bank is an agent, but the money is with the government, the money is with the central bank. And those for funds like that, you can explore, the banks will advise you that look, hey, depending on how long you're going to, because in Ghana, we even have 10 year bonds. We have 10 year bonds issued in Ghana. So if that huge sums of money is in that you have, and if you feel you don't want to <laughs> touch it over a long period of time, you can put it in funds like that. The, um, sometimes you can build a portfolio. You can buy different kinds of mix of investment. You can buy some stocks. You can buy some treasury bills. You can buy some bonds and build a portfolio with it. Mm -hmm. But for that one, you have to go to, um, uh, investment advisory firms who would advise you on what to do with, with that. But there are all these are various options. Everything depends on how long you're willing to invest. The higher mm -hmm. the interest you make, the, the longer you, in, you invest, the higher the interest. And also for banks, our products are normally, we call them fixed income. Like if you come and we say, we're going to pay you 12% fixed deposit for 10 years, you are sure that every year you're going to get your 12%. So it's fixed, we respect to what happens in the economy. You get your income. Some of the investments, you may have fluctuations. For example, if you buy stocks, depending on how the stock market performs, your income will increase or decrease. So, mm -hmm. All this will need to sit with you. Look at the circumstances around the money. How long this money, how free is it? You understand? <laughs> is it money that is breathing quietly with no pressure? We can put it in long-term investment and that will give you higher returns. 
I really like that. How free, how free is your money? <laughs> that is quite interesting. Some money are not free. They are of free course. only for few <laughs> hours. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's quite interesting. And yeah. I think he added something that is quite interesting there. He says, your guest also happened to be a very good drama during his teens. What, what does he do to wind down. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Kwakusi team knows you very, very yeah, well. I used to be a good drama. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Sim Tim, we, we were, he, he was in the German group, you know, guess why I wasn't know, but at least I can play some drama, drums for him. And um, what do I do to wind down? Um, mostly, I like to read. Um, I like to read a lot of motivational books and um, and I also like computer games sometimes. It's it's something that can be addictive, but mm. I try to do that once I have a, I have the time to do it, yeah. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> wow. Look, I've been enjoying this discussion. And if you are watching us, we want to encourage you to really share this for somebody to have an opportunity to watch this. And also, if you are really visiting us for the first time, this is the first time you've been on this platform. This is the place you have to be every Tuesday, every Thursday, and every Saturday, 8 p.m. GMT. These are the kind of discussions that we bring to you on a regular basis. Last year, we interviewed over 100 people with these powerful discussions. If you go to our YouTube channel and you say you want to learn, every day you will take one video and watch. By the time you finish all the videos for last year, trust me, the things that you would have learned will be amazing. It will blow your mind. Because can you imagine this kind of discussion and similar of these discussions the whole of last yeah. year? And trust me, this is what we bring to you every single week. And that is why I encourage you to like this page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Because we are now in the display sensation of knowledge and you are where you are in life not because you don't have the resources but it just because you don't have the right knowledge because in our generation the right knowledge really opens doors for the resources that you need for your vision and trust me whether we like it or we don't like it banking is part of our lives and we need to understand that terrain for us to use it to our advantage. Now, I've got so many comments here, but I will read a few of them. I've got Kwame Apia says, Gomua Akomu is proud of you, Mr. Prince Baini. And he also said, in fact, Mr. Prince Baini, you need to gather all Akwamu youths who wishes, who wishes to go into business and lecture us so i think i'll be going to ghana getting to the middle of this year so you have to come to ghana we'll go to akwamu and organize a youth campaign for all these young people right <laughs> then i've got our man randy randy isaac yobo who says insightful thanks for sharing the knowledge then i have got love it or henewa dazi who says great work and i've got emmanuel Esuma says swedro then Randy Isaac Yobo says, watching you. So Randy Isaac Yobo, our mate from Monasco. Then yeah. I've got Edwina Morris says, watching live from Morovia, Liberia. I trust your ability. Then Kwame Apia, um, Emmanuel Suman says, watching you live from Sweden. Bravo, Boza. And Kwame Apia says, which Sweden? Kaswa Sweden or what? <laughs> These guys are interesting. Then I've got Papa Mwa say, that's my bro, brilliant always. Then I've got Benny yeah. says, watching you live, congratulations. I've got Kobnadada says, bro, con congratulations, listening live. Then Papa B says, live from Gomwa Kwemu, good work, brother. <laughs> comments are so many, my brother. You have really touched the hearts of people. <laughs> Now, before I go, what is the future of banking? Looking at the way fintech is disrupting the banking space. Okay, um, the future of banking will continue to be banking. 
<laughs> um, the thing is this, and I've advised um, at several board meetings that I have attended that look, fintech have certain advantages that banks cannot compete with. Look at the size of most fintech companies. They're very small, few staff, but they're carrying over 600,000, sometimes 1.2 million customers. So banks do not have that capacity. So when it comes to the retail landscape, I think that the fintech will overtake the banks in that area. But of course, banks' traditional responsibilities like um, issuing of LCs, doing that corporate banking thing will still remain. What I foresee in the next 20, 30 years will be a revolution in branch banking because there will not be any need to open branches all across countries, all across, um, um, not even countries, but all across regions and locations because the fintech would take care of the individual, the retail aspect of banking. The banks will be limited to corporate customers. And that what for, for, for banks to be able to partake in that market, we need to partner with the fintech companies. The problem is banks see themselves today as competitors to the fintech, but that should not be. Because we do not have the efficiency, the kind of work that the fintechs are doing now Banks do not have that efficiency to do the same thing because it's going to be more expensive. Look at the number of staff who are cut across the country, right? Mm -hmm. You cannot maintain the same level of um, operations that way. So the most efficient thing to do is to seed the retail market to, to the to the fintech. They're going to grow. They're going to be impacting in almost every aspect of our life. But the traditional banking will still remain. It may be a corporate bank meeting business people, um, issuing LCs because the fintech at this point they've not developed any way of handling things like LCs, trade finance and all that. And all these fintechs will still keep money with the bank. So what will happen is that the banks will do it. There's another thing that is coming up which is called agency banking. So you there's going to be you have people individuals performing banking services on behalf of banks. Let's say somebody with a shop in Kumasi or maybe Techiman somewhere will decide that he will dedicate a small corner of his shop to allow customers who want to come and deposit or withdraw money on their account to do it there. The bank may not be there, but that person is going to do this function for those various banks. And it's gotten to the point where there's going to be a universal agent. So that one agent can serve every bank. So you can go across the supermarket and go and do whatever banking fun function you want to do in the supermarket. This is what I see coming up in, in, in the next 20, 30 years in, in the banking landscape. So the retail part is going to be dominated by, by the fintechs. I mean, you talk about ZPay, which is a sponsor on this program. We have um, eTransact. There are a lot of them coming up and I can see them taking over that particular market. We banks, the banks, what banks executives need to do is to reposition ourselves and then allow that market to be managed by them whilst we coordinate, we work with them. You don't compete with them, you cooperate with them to enhance our ability to deliver quality services to our customers across the, the continent. Wow, 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 wow. So I, I think I like what you say, that they don't compete with them, but they work with them. Because I think when the fintech came in, the banks were finding it difficult to integrate their systems into their banking system. But it looks like it reached a time they didn't have any option than to no. really go for it and work with them. Uh, okay. And I think you are very right saying that. Uh, but I think we, we, in our business, we try to be more competitive rather than working together, right? No, you, you have to know who to compete and you have to know who you, you have to cooperate with. Look, in, in, in the banks, even in Ghana, you see Ghana, the banking industry is highly competitive. But I can tell you, they work together in a lot of things. There's something we call syndication, where if you have a loan which is beyond your capacity, you can call another bank and say, look, hey, let's together finance this loan. Banks cooperate a lot and you need to deploy both to be able to remain successful. And so I think that it's not always about competition. Sometimes you have to even cooperate. Even your, your fiercest rivalry, your fiercest rival, you should attempt to make some cooperation with them depending on what is the mutual interest between you 
and, and, and your competitor. So it's not always competition. Sometimes cooperation is more important and more beneficial. So new, know who you to compete with and who to really work with and exactly. at what time. That is really powerful. Trust me, I've enjoyed every bit of this discussion. If you are watching us, please share this for somebody to have an opportunity to watch this powerful discussion and also like our page on Facebook, T2I TV UK, and also Train to Inspire Consultancy. Now, before I go, I just want to mention a few of our sponsors. This program is sponsored by Train to Inspire mm -hmm. Consultancy. That is your business training and consulting firm. Train to Inspire works with you from business startup, business development, and building strategy for your business in a very competitive market. Also, Train to Inspire work with schools in relation to the personal development of students in second cycle institutions, colleges, and universities. Then also ZPay Ghana Limited, your remittance and mobile money company based in Ghana. ZPay has just launched their USSD code for uh, mobile money, and that is star 270 hash. Just dial it on your phone and register for ZPay Mobile Money. And also, if you want to, sp we want to speak to any of our sponsors, their contact details are scrolling on the screen. Take them and contact them. Also, if you want to sponsor any of our shows, take the number for T2I TV UK and or train to inspire consultancy. Also, if you want to support what we are doing, we want to bring this to the corners of the continent and also to everyone in the diaspora or everyone that really cares to learn. We cannot do this alone. Now, somebody was talking about bringing this to Akwemu. This is what we want to do. We want to help young people by not only having discussion, but going to the extent of giving them the practical skills, the tools that they need, and the support system for them to build their visions, their talent, and whatever business they aspire to really go into. But we need the support of each and every one of you here to really be able to achieve that. And trust me, we know that when we work together, we'll be able to succeed together. Mr. Prince Baini, it's been wonderful having you on the show. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm really grateful and uh, for the opportunity to share my knowledge and experience with you and your, your, your audience. In fact, I remain very proud of you and the kind of work you're doing for the youth. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will encourage you to continue. It's not easy, but no. <laughs> keep, keep fighting. Thank you yes, so much. It's, it's not easy, but as you say, we're going to keep fighting because you see, if nobody take that bold step, then nothing gets done. I, I always say that the young people, what we are trying to do first is to change their mindset because the young people are more accustomed, most of them are more accustomed to entertainment, to sports and to politics. They are not accustomed to knowledge-based discussions like this. And we want to change their mindset to change the narrative in this space. And when the mindset changes, everything that follows is going to be easier. And I really want to thank you for be, to be part of this mindset change. And all that I want to say is that God richly bless you for your time. But before you go, what is your last word to everyone that is watching us? I will just say that um, believe in yourself. Have care and concern for your neighbor. Mm. And let's work together to make this world a better place. Mm. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Ghana, Ghana, today is their 64th, our 64th independence birthday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. we have got the next 25 years to our century. The question I want to ask everyone here is that the government have their own challenges. But Probably they are not doing their best. But you that is watching us today, you that is going to watch this tomorrow, I want to challenge you that there is a saying that if you are not part of the solution, then obviously you are part of the problem. For the next 25 years, I want you to be part of the solution of Ghana and Africa as a whole. All of us have got a role to play. Mr. Baini is a very busy person, but he has given his time and his knowledge to impact the platform. And this is what we are doing, that he is part of the solution today. 
what role are you playing upon all the chaos that we are seeing in our country and in Africa? Every little helps, that is what Tesco says in the UK. What do you have that you can really contribute? Some of us, we are contributing our small quota to it. We have invested our small that we have to really bring such discussions to. We sitting here, it cost us so much money to bring these discussions to you. But we know that at least if one person's mind changes, if the mindset of one person changes, it's not only one person anymore. Because that person will influence his society and community, and that person will influence his family. So it becomes something generational. And that is what we are seeking for. Be part of this solution of Ghana. Be part of this solution of Africa. Start from somewhere with your scarce resources, resources and be part of this great continent that we have. One day we will conquer. We want to leave a legacy for our children's children. And it starts for me and you. Happy Independence Day to Ghana. And God richly bless everybody that watched us. And Mr. Baini, God bless you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks Thank for all those um, who watch us and those who yeah. send us messages. Grateful. Exactly. Exactly. And mm -hmm. on Tuesday, I've got a young man that I have mentored for the last five years. And we are going to take that young man from the last five years to today. The young man sent me a message about a few weeks ago. And he said, Oscar, thank you very much. Because of you, I've been able to achieve this. And it was really an emotional moment for the two of us. Because I know when I took the young man from and where he is now. If you are really down and you think there are no opportunities in Africa, you need to listen to this young man on Tuesday, 8 p.m. GMT. It will blow your mind. And trust me, the kind of things this young man has done in the last five years and the kind of contact list this man carries, that even when I go to Ghana, I want to see certain prominent people. It is this young man that calls for me to do a follow-up. Why? It was just because we had one conversation and we worked towards it. And today it is history. Be part of Tuesday's discussion. It's going to be an amazing discussion. See you guys and God richly bless all of you. Bye-bye.